name says it all. I'm Hakeem Branch. Rob Jarrell. And today we're going to review, we'll recap the Floyd Mayweather Marcos Maidana fight, which happened uh, on May the 3rd, which was last Saturday. Um, if you're watching it after, like, you know, next week or whatever, it was on May 3rd. And in this fight, we had a lot of intangibles going on. Uh, didn't it? Didn't really go the way we thought it would because if you watched our preview video, we didn't think it'd be too competitive, and it turned out to be very competitive. But people have to hold their horses, and we'll understand. Uh, we'll explain why. Go ahead, Rob. Okay, before we get started, this is totally objective. So before you go calling us flow moles or whatever about this fight, on just listen. Well, if they go do all that, they're not going to listen. Anyway, I'm just throwing it out there. Uh, okay, so this was probably one of Floyd's toughest matches in quite some time. Yeah. Um, Madonna brought a lot of the stuff that you don't really see in a lot of fighters. Or it's not at really the level that you would normally see. He brought tenacity. He brought aggressiveness. And he brought a don't give a damn attitude toward the greatness and skill of Floyd. He came to fight. And that's what we got. A fight. Now, from the outset, Madonna pressured Mayweather. Yeah. The plan was to get up in his face. Get him on the ropes and throw as many punches as you can. And as you can see in the comp, it, not the copy box, show stats. <laughs> he threw twice as many punches as Floyd Mayweather did because he was his head was in his chest and he was going for broke. Yeah, he didn't care where he landed either. It was wherever the punch landed, it was where it landed. So in this thing, it will in this category, this factor, effective aggressiveness because he made Floyd uncomfortable throughout the whole fight or at least the first half of the fight. I scored it 7-5. I had a 9-3. 8-4 was probably the average. The average. Now why do you ask? Well, even though he had effective aggressiveness, he really didn't land that much or he only landed about 200, what, 15, 200? Uh, it was 221, I think, was the exact number. 221 punches after throwing over 800 punches to Floyd's 230 punches to, which was only about 400 and yeah. some, it, it was over half. So while he was making it uncomfortable, he wasn't really landing at the rate that he needed to with that output. Right. And when it really comes down to it, you have the four criteria of judging, which is clean punching, effective aggressiveness, uh, range generalship, and defense. But clean punching kind of takes precedence over all of the others. Mm -hmm. you, you start to look at the other ones when there's a lack of clean punching, which we did not have in this fight. We had plenty of clean punching from Floyd Mayweather. That's right. Now... Madonna, like Rob said, made it uncomfortable, threw all the punches, he threw everything except for the kitchen sink, and if it was there, he would have threw it at him. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't landing a lot of clean, telling blows. Those were all coming from the Mayweather side. Now, what Mayweather was kind of hard to tell because he was up on him, but you can see Mayweather, he blocked a lot of those. Now, he did, what's his name, did, uh, Madonna did land... Some punches, but to me, they always look like they glanced off the top of his head. So Mayweather was rolling. Anything else, like to the body, was very was blocked by his elbows or his shoulders. Or if he went up high, he always had his glove up, which is, again, check our video on the shoulder roll. Um, so he was either able to roll, clinch, or make sure they were glancing off his glove or off his shoulder. Right, and those don't count as clean punches. Exactly. So... Like, Maidana was landing with everything he could. He landed with backhands, elbows, the side. He even threw a knee at one point. That's right. None of which count for landed punches. So, when you do that and you're looking at the fight and you're trying to find the clean punches, that's why I had it for Mayweather. 
Like there were there were a lot of close rounds, mm -hmm. but even in the close rounds, you still have to give it to the person who you felt had to clean the punches. So when you're looking at a fight like that, the judges are going to look at it at that way as well, or at least some judges. And in all actuality, for this kind of fight. Any score you had it was probably right because different judges prefer different things. Some guys like activity. So if you score based on activity, you're going to give a lot of those rounds to Madonna. That's right. If you like aggressiveness along with the activity, there you go again for Madonna. But if you like defense and clean punching, then you go with Mayweather. And then as far as ring generalship, that was kind of a toss up because sometimes you see Madonna pushing his will and sometimes you see Floyd doing his. So if you split it up like that, either way, like if you had Madonna winning, I can totally see that. If you had him winning in a landslide, maybe not, but possibly. But if you had Floyd, Floyd winning close, see that. If you had him winning, um, there were some definite rounds that Madonna won, so and those were the ones that I gave him. Um, like the first round, maybe like the fourth round, and I think like the eighth round. And you can make a big case for the twelfth round too. That's right. Um, May Mayweather did some really good work in the first minute or so of that, and then kind of dropped off after that. Um, Madonna really didn't do much, but it kind of evened out so he did more in the last two minutes so you could give him that round too that makes it eight to four so it's really um, based on the judges preference now there was a video that um, HBO just released from uh, Harold Letterman on how to score a fight and he broke down those four criteria of clean punching effective aggressiveness ring generalship and defense and he says Ideally, you want it to be 25% for each, but realistically, it's 99% clean punching and everything else kind of falls in where it is. That's right. So like I said earlier, if there's a lack of clean punching from both fighters, it's when you go to the other criteria and see who's doing what. And in this fight, you had plenty of clean punching. Um, I was talking to a guy in the gym and he kind of made the analogy that I like. It was like a machine gun and a sharpshooter. Now, if you place an apple on a fence and you ask somebody to hit it, you've got somebody with a machine gun and somebody with like a marksman handgun or, or, or a uh, rifle. You got the machine gunner. He's hitting everything. He might graze the apple or he might hit it, but you, you know he's going to hit everything else around it. But then you got the sharpshooter who's just going to hit the apple. And that's kind of what we had in this fight. Madonna was hitting everywhere, but he didn't really hit the target that often. Yeah, not only were those punches clean, but they were actually judge and fan friendly. Yeah. I meant the, the jab to the body, almost automatic. The left hook upstairs, almost automatic. When Madonna tried to cover up, you saw him slip the uppercut in between um, his elbows. Guess what? You could tell. And it's kind of one thing to see Mayweather rolling, trying to duck, or in off the ropes. But you also see when he hit Madonna, you can hear from the, the crowd, ooh, he stood in the pocket and delivered a left hook, uh, the, the lead right, uh, jab to the body. And you could see, again, clean punch, you could see it, and it looked it had like it had something on it right. and trust me when I say this Madonna felt it especially those body shots because every time he tried to advance and he took a shot he was pushed back a few feet and he had to reset yep and anytime you have to reset it kind of throws you out your rhythm yep. or in this case it did throw him out his rhythm because to me from 7th to the 12th for the rest of that fight he was out of the rhythm that he wanted to bring and you can see whenever Mayweather kept the fight in the middle of the ring, he was able to get those clean punches and dominate the rounds. Yeah, that's right. So, 
when you look at it like that, that's how you see Floyd winning. And then you even had, like I said earlier, however you scored the fight is kind of how it went because of what you are looking for. Mm -hmm. Like you have some people, like a lot of more the casual fans, they just see Maradona throwing punches. So they're like, oh, he's throwing a lot of punches. He's winning. Then you have the more trained eye who is looking for those sharp punches from Mayweather or or Maidana because he did land a few sharp punches. One thing that I was very impressed with was his jab. Maidana had a very good jab when they got out into the outside. That's right. And as much as Floyd wants to say that he fought the fight because he wanted to, a lot of it had to do with Maidana. Maidana did a great job of getting Floyd to the ropes even though sometimes Floyd did just back up to the ropes but a lot of it was Maidana getting him to the ropes with his presence. So you got to give Marcos Maidana props for that. Um, so, so what? He was a little dirty. The ref should have stepped in and did something about it. And he didn't, so he kept doing it. That's right. Um, that was the best fight that he could fight to win, so he was going to do it. Now they're talking about a rematch. Now what options does Floyd have outside of Maidana? That's not Pacquiao. Well, let's take a look. He could fight Amir Khan, mm. which we talked about in our previous video on the undercard. Right. Uh, Amir Khan doesn't want to fight in September for religious reasons, and you know he should be respected for that. Um, you got Keith Thurman and Sean Porter, who are very good fighters, but aren't really ready financially as far as like they won't bring in that money that Mayweather wants. Um, Kind of right now, the only thing he does have is Maidana again. That's right. I mean, Danny Garcia is not going to move up just yet. Uh, neither is Matisse. Um, a lot of names either aren't big enough or they um, they have some unfinished business or they need a fight or two to get to fight Mayweather. Right. Now, as everyone says, he could actually move up and fight some at 154. Well, it's probably not going to happen. Uh, 154 division right now is pretty tied up. Um, Either they're with HBO top rank, or like Canelo has to fight uh, Irslan is Laurel. Uh, Demetrius Andrade has a fight coming up against yeah. um, Brian Rose. Brian Rose, and he's not a big name anyway. That's right. So I mean, everyone sees the t and everyone talks about Golovkin, which they're trying to negotiate a fight with Julio Cesar Chavez, and in my opinion, he's just too damn big. So at this point, the best option, because that was a, one, a hell of a fight, and two, probably another dangerous opponent, still a same dangerous opponent, we'll probably see that fight again in September. And to me, well, to a lot of people, it's probably going to look a lot different uh, than this fight. Yeah, because in that fight, we saw the best Marcos Maidana had to offer, which gave Floyd a little bit of trouble in the beginning which he adjusted to and then rose to the occasion, which we have to give him props for being the champion that he is, mm -hmm. to do that, which we didn't see from a lot of other fighters who had to do that. Um, so, but we didn't see the best out of Floyd Mayweather. Um, he did pretty good, but had he used a little bit of lateral movement in that fight, he could have made it much easier. Had he used the space a lot more and he will probably do that now that he's fought Maidana and he knows what he's up against. Um, he'll probably use the ring a lot more and just completely outpoint him. The only real issue would be his hands because you keep landing clean shots like that on people and you don't have that, that concussive stop, knock a person out type of power. That's why his hands keep getting hurt. He's so accurate, it's almost a catch-22. Right. He's landing so often that he's hurting himself because he's landing so often, but the guys aren't being taken out of there. So he might limit his punches even less because he's moving. He won't have to throw as much. That's right. And also he'll take down Maidana's output. And it'll probably like Rob said for the preview video, look a lot more like the Robert Guerrero fight which was pretty entertaining, but not on the level that this fight was because of the way Maidana fought all in Floyd's chest and throwing the rule book out the window. Um, you want to touch on the glove thing or you 
Leave it alone. Uh, basically, if you saw the video, it was uh, posted that the original gloves that Madonna wanted to use for the fight was not allowed by Mayweather's camp because of the distribution of the padding. Uh, from what I've researched or what we know, it was horsehair instead of foam and it was very flimsy in the knuckle area where it was more padding in the wrist area. Um, in the video you can see how how flimsy it was so they tried to go to another one which was approved by the uh, Nevada State Boxing Commission which still wasn't to the liking of the Floyd Mayweather camp because again it's horsehair and the distribution is up still a little a off in there. Yeah it's a little different than your um, average your, gloves. Your average Everlast gloves. So mm -hmm. They, they changed the gloves where it had foam padding um, and one of the negotiation points in the rematch if there is one is that Madonna may get to use his original gloves. Now honestly I don't think it's going to make a difference. Um, it's more of a fighter's preference um, and I think ignorance on the part of the Mayweather camp that they didn't know that they do have gloves with different types of distribution of the padding. Now those first gloves may have been defective like even like I've worn all those types of gloves myself mm -hmm. and even when you're using the horsehair you can still have padding in there where you're not going to press down and like feel the knuckles right there that's right um you're still going to have a little bit of uh pushback from the glove before you get to the knuckles um they still want to protect your knuckles the the foam padding and the horsehair padding are more for the protection of the hands and not the fighters getting hit. It's the same thing with headgear. It's so you don't get injured hitting the other person. Headgear doesn't stop you from getting knocked out, as you see from the amateurs. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with gloves. The foam padding versus the horsehair um, is more for the protection of the fighter's hands and not for, like, getting knockouts. That's right. Um, like they did, it was a science uh, experiment. They did a uh, fight science where they had an MMA glove, a boxer's glove, and bare knuckles. And both of the gloves registered around the same amount of force, even though the MMA glove is only four ounces and the boxing glove was 10 ounces. They use eight ounces in this fight. But I can understand where some concern may come if you have a fighter like Madonna who probably has hard knuckles and pretty durable hands and the padding isn't enough you throw the lack of padding plus the hand wraps then you it got could, weapons you got weapons it's at this point it is dangerous so another glove uh, the same type of glove just with better distribution would have been acceptable for this fight and that's the one that the commission approved it just wasn't approved by Mayweather which, like he said, he's the A side, so he calls the shots. That's right. Um, that's really it as far as that issue goes. Um, and pretty much we covered everything. Yeah. Before we go, uh, if you didn't see it, uh, Ishe Smith, uh, someone in Floyd Mayweather's camp, part of the money team, won his fight on Fox Sports 1. Fox Sports 1 on Thursday by knockout in the second round second round and that's kind of rare for Ishe so it's a good win for him hopefully we'll see him back in the 154 pound uh, getting hunt. Si hunt getting yeah. significant fights maybe fighting for a title soon so and he was majorly offensive in this fight which is unlike Ishe so we hope to see him back pretty soon yep that's it guys thanks for watching this video hope you enjoyed if you did make sure you click the like button you can click the thumbs up like button, the plus one button, wherever you're watching this. Share it with your friends because I know this is a hot topic and they probably have some feelings on this fight. So share it with them as well. Make sure if you have any comments, you leave them below. Any questions, leave them below. We'll hit you back. Uh, if you aren't subscribed, make sure you do subscribe because we got plenty of other videos. There are plenty of other fights we got to talk about and we got some great technical toolboxes coming down the pipe for you guys. Um, and make sure you like us on Facebook, Capital Combat, and join in on the discussion there. We uh, do round-by-round uh, -round breakdowns during the fight and other things regarding combat as well. So, thanks for watching this video. We'll catch you in the next one. Take it easy, everybody. Peace. This is round one.
won and you already lost They don't seem to see that everything we've done is coming and gone My fists are on fire, I perform till I perspire My demons are in a rage, keep thinking that it's a game I kick rhyme, hurricane, I told them I don't play I'm liquid, Black Street Fighter, Street Fighter.